Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Frontier Forts. No, forts. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, God. Ghostly gas. Spectral stink. Paranormal. Pew, pew. Oh. This is an exceptional topic because forts were very prevalent on the frontier. They were not only havens of safety, but also way stations where you could resupply during your journey. A good example of this is Fort Clatsop that was built in Oregon during the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1805. The team used this as their winter encampment while they collected supplies and prepared maps and journals. It didn't withstand the test of time, but today there is a replica you can visit. As more expeditions out west took place, trails were blazed and more forts were built. Many were also considered trading posts, with tribal members and soldiers conducting business. Some of these were famous in their day, like Fort Kearney and Bent's Fort. After the Battle of Little Bighorn, the army erected Fort Custer and Fort Keogh, clearly named to honor those fallen officers. Some of the buildings one would find in a fort are barracks, hospitals, stables, officers' quarters, parade ground, and a Starbucks. Okay, maybe that last one isn't true. Oh, this is just stupid. Hollywood, in an effort to entertain us, led us to believe these forts were besieged frequently by warring tribes. Although there are a couple of examples of attacks, largely this was not the case. Most of the forts in the western landscape weren't even walled in with sharp logs. Even the idea of a flaming arrow starting one of those logs on fire is a bit of a reach. However, one happened at Fort Lancaster in Texas the day after Christmas in 1867. A huge contingent of Kickapoo Indians attacked the fort and the Buffalo Soldier Company within. It wasn't looking good for the army, but the horses in the corral were so freaked out they stampeded. The Kickapoo continued the onslaught while some of their braves collected the army livestock and not long after, they left. Tucson, where I live, was a presidio the Spanish built in the 18th century to protect the settlement from Native American attacks. After the Gadsden Purchase, the adobe bricks making up the walls were essentially repurposed for other buildings that made up Tucson. Old timers used the wall for fighting off Indians? Yeah. Built when all this belonged to Mexico. Whole town inside the walls, soldiers are guarding it day and night. Just a few miles from downtown is Fort Lowell, which was constructed during the Civil War. Eventually it became a necessary installation during the Apache Wars. Not only did it offer protection, but also resupplied other forts in the territory. Now, there are over 20 forts in Arizona alone. Some of these western military installations from the 19th century are still in use today. Fort Huachuca, not far from Tombstone, is an army base. Fort Sill, Oklahoma, which is where the famous Geronimo was imprisoned, is also still a military post. It's interesting to point out that many of these historic garrisons of the frontier have been restored or replicated so that we all may visit them and learn about that aspect of frontier life. In fact, fellow YouTuber Duke Frazier, who you've seen on this channel, worked as a historian at Bent's Fort and Fort Laramie. Both of those historic sites educate guests with living history and demonstrations. Interestingly, Fort Laramie in Wyoming was the largest fort on the Northern Plains. It was also the capital of the fur trade empire and a primary way station on the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails. I don't mean that whole big group there, I mean a single strand of beads is what they get for one buffalo robe. Beads are pretty high priced out here, especially blue and white. And if you look at a lot of the Plains Indian beadwork, especially the Cheyenne, Blue and white is almost exclusive. After the Transcontinental Railroad was completed, Laramie's use was becoming obsolete, and by 1890 was decommissioned. So, if you're ever driving by one of these fantastic pieces of American history in your travels, be sure and stop in. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. 
As always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Raiders here, Frontier Forts.